uh, sales area, we could see that under customers and Eric music, uh, where, where's Eric music? that internally, if they contacted us, we could see clearly what is happening. We're like, yeah, you're, there's the 200 credit balance. It was created from, from an estimate. I can apply that to a future purchase. So that's, that's great internally, but it, it's, it's, it's not exactly right from a financial statement reporting basis. So we let uh, QuickBooks do it this way from the bookkeeping perspective. And then we just said, hey, look, if I need to do an adjusting entry at the end of the year, I'll do an adjusting entry. And I'll just basically increase the accounts receivable by whatever uh, customers have negative balances to it and put the other side into the unearned revenue account. So it's proper for reporting purposes. Noting that this is not exactly the type of adjusting entry you see in a book problem. In a book problem, the, usually the issue is that all the revenue is going into unearned revenue and then you need to determine how much of the revenue has been earned by determining how many newspapers have been provided, usually on a monthly basis, right? You actually deliver the paper or you deliver the magazine or deliver the application, and then you decrease the unearned revenue recording the other side to revenue as it has been earned. You, you, with QuickBooks, you might have that similar kind of problem. You, can, you could still have that issue, but you might actually be able to automate that to some degree because if you if you get paid in advance in a subscription model you might be able to then assign automatic uh, uh, invoices to apply to that payment to happen on a monthly basis so that it will it will then decrease either accounts receivable or possibly unearned revenue depending on how you set it up you know on a monthly basis so that issue is still kind of an issue, but it might not be something that you need to do in the adjusting entry. You might actually be able to automate that as part of your accounting process. We have an ex another course or presentation uh, on that, or uh, if you wanna look at that in more detail. But this is also an issue that comes up a lot of the times, and that's this negative receivable. Also realize that these two accounts that were impacted with this adjusting entry are not classically adjusting entry things because both accounts are on the balance sheet. Usually adjusting entries have a timing issue, one of the accounts being an income statement account, the income statement account having to do with the timing. In this case, we have the, the classification of a negative accounts receivable versus a positive liability. So that means that if you're a small business, you, you might just be doing this for taxes and there's no impact on the profit and loss. And if you're just doing a Schedule C for tax preparation, you might not need to do the adjusting entry. You might be able to get the benefits of having a negative receivable. It's probably not gonna mess up your internal decision-making process. And you don't need to do an adjusting entry if you're just doing a Schedule C because you're, you don't need it for taxes and you're not doing any external reporting. If you are doing a more advanced tax return or a more complicated tax return like a, a schedule c or a partnership then you might need to do the adjusting entry if you do an external reporting for a loan bank audit then you would think you might need to do adjusting entry in this case so that's what we did we increased this one if i go into it we did an adjusting entry and if i drill down on it it looks like this and so there it is noting that i had to record a name to the accounts receivable account because QuickBooks will not let us post it without a name because they're trying to force us to have a sub ledger for accounts receivable broken out by customer that will still match and tie out to the the uh, amount on the balance sheet. So so we're going to have to uh, to to deal with that, and so that's going to be our our one of the issues that we will uh, deal with. Now we have to do a reversing entry for this one. Because the idea here is that, is that I, I, the bookkeeping side of things is great. So I want to keep the bookkeeping side the way it is. Uh, but I want to adjust it for external reporting purposes, which we did here. And then I want to get back to where we were before, after. So you think, well, maybe I could just delete that transaction. But you don't want to delete it, right? We lose the audit trail. Also note internally that if I go into my customer over here, we created a new customer. 
and we put it down here in ZZZ. Your options whenever doing an adjusting entry for accounts receivable with a journal entry instead of using forms like an invoice or a payment form are that you could create another accounts receivable account that's an accounts receivable adjusting entry so that you don't mess up the accounts receivable at all. But you can't make it an accounts receivable type of account because then it will still have a sub ledger. So you could make an other current asset called accounts receivable adjusting entry. And that way you won't mess up the sub ledger at all and you'll have an account just for your adjusting entries. Or you could use the accounts receivable and then add a customer, but possibly create a new customer, such as we did, ZZZ customer, so that it will be at the bottom of the list. So all the ugliness from journal entries in the sub ledger will be in that area instead of in the actual customer detail. Or you can enter the transactions in the actual customer detail, assigning it to the customer that, that has the issue noting that you're going to have some messiness in the detail. So let me show you what that looks like. In ZZZ, here's kind of the detail we had. We entered this journal entry into a ZZZ customer. So that's kind of ugly because because an increase is usually an invoice. That's why I made it into another customer. Let's reverse the transaction and I'll show you what that looks what that looks like. So I'm going to go to the balance sheet. I'm going to right click on the balance sheet and duplicate it so I can get back into that journal entry by drilling down on the on the journal entry. So I'm going to pull that to the left, close up the hand boogie. I'm going to drill down on the accounts receivable for February. And then I'm going to go into that 450, the journal entry. I'm just drilling down to get to the journal entry because QuickBooks has this cool tool of reversing it. So if I just reverse this one, it'll take all of the accounts and do the opposite, uh, making the debits credits and the credits debits, which is exactly what we want with a reversing entry. So I'm just gonna say reverse it. It changed the date to 3-1, has a new entry.